What's going on guys, Filmingtons here. It is a day before the three-day sports card show weekend at Shriners in Wilmington. This is going to be the biggest show that I will have ever done. Um, just priced out pretty much all my stuff. Still need a few supplies, but um, got this. It's a fanny pack. I figured if Silver Jackify wears one at the National, then, you know, I shouldn't be so concerned about my image where I shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't be insecure about wearing something like this. It was the most masculine looking one on Amazon when I purchased it, $14.99. Um, I'll probably uh, have some footage tomorrow at the show and you'll be able to see me with it. Um, so sales goals, it's tough because I only, I do know quite a few people that sell there, but I don't have a relationship on the level with those people where I can kind of ask them personal things like, hey, how much money did you make? Or, you know, what were your profits back in 2016? They wouldn't admit that to me even if I had, even if I asked. So I am thinking based on the shows I have done, uh, based on the, the throughput or the volume of customers that those shows had, uh, based on the duration of those shows, they've all been one day, they've all been four to six hours, this is in total about 20 hours. This is also going to attract um, a lot more shoppers, a lot more buyers, probably people from outside of New England as well, which will be new to me. Um, you have people that are going to be stationed up at hotels. Uh, PSA Beckett will be on site um, doing authentication, not same day like the National or the National can turn it around within a weekend or something. But uh, that service I don't think is offered. But there, there also are going to be various autographers there. So Pete Rose, Harold Baines, uh, don't quote me on this, but I believe Steve Pierce, Mitch Moreland, uh, Kevin Folk, James White, Oscar Robinson, um, and a few other guys. I think there's actually a ComCon character too or something. Uh, a little bit different. They're trying something new. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited. And um, again, based on all of those, based based on what I know about how I've done at other shows, um, that have been a lot smaller. I think, I think 12,000 is a realistic sales goal for me this weekend based on the inventory I have as well. Um, so if you break that down into days, I think undoubtedly Sunday will be the slowest. It's also only five hours on Sunday, I think. Uh, Saturday's the longest day. It's around nine to five and Friday, I think it's 12 to seven. So basically i'm thinking friday you know people are going to try to get there early get deals probably the most dealer to dealer uh deals will be going on at that time i'm thinking four thousand for friday i'm thinking saturday is going to be the most um most busy with customers and just the, the biggest day overall it's the longest day so i think saturday i think um six thousand 6,000 is a good goal for Saturday. And then for Sunday, you know, probably very few customers, um, maybe some last minute dealer to dealer negotiations, I'm thinking 2,000. So 462, that puts me at 12,000. Um, profit wise, what does that equate to? I don't know. It could be, I, I don't know. I, I let's, let's talk about that later. But um, I priced out again, almost all of my stuff. So I'm about to show you guys that. Um, I did choose to put prices on almost every single single card, which was a difficult decision for me to make. I've been to shows where a lot of the high-end stuff, whether we're talking vintage, we're probably even more, um, more likely modern. They're, they're not, they don't have prices on the fronts or backs of the cards. You kind of have to start up a dialogue with the dealer to get that. Uh, there's pros and cons of that. Pros for the the, 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 the dealer himself is that without um, prices, um, you don't have to worry about other dealers undercutting you. Also, I've noticed this as a dealer myself, you're going to get some eyeballs that are just going to immediately turn away from a very high-end showcase. You know, there could be five or six cards of those 36 cards in that showcase that they could afford. But once they start seeing, you know, 900, 850, 1125, 1600, they might just turn away because of the intimidation factor. Um, also, you know, you, you have you have modern cards which tend to fluctuate a lot. 
And um, just in a given day, something could happen. The player could have a good performance. There could be some eBay recently sold item that you haven't seen. I know all the eBay comps, but as of Wednesday, I don't have time to check them all again throughout the weekend for specific cards. Um, so, so there could be a possibility where the, the prospective buyer could throw out a number that could be higher than what your listed price would have been, you know, and then what are you going to say? No. So, so I guess those are the pros for not having a price from the dealer's perspective, having a price. Um, there's only one of me. Sure. I'll have people helping me while I'm transacting with customers, um, talking with customers. Maybe I'm distracted. Maybe I'm walking around a little bit and I have somebody covering the booth for me. And um, you don't want customers to be dissuaded from your table because they don't have enough time to, to track you down and ask you what the prices of their, of their favorite eight items are. And by the time you get back to the table, maybe they can't even remember. By the time you get back to the table, maybe they buy the same card from somebody else. Um, so the lack of transparency too, it's like there's like a, a trust factor built in kind of like, you know, what you're getting and at least it allows the, the buyer to kind of take that number, whatever they want to do. They want to write it down their little digital notepad or they want to take a picture of your card and they want to research it later. Let them do that, you know, make it easy for them because they're giving you this money for a piece of cardboard. So, you know, I, so I saw pluses and minuses to it. I certainly did. Bowman 1951 said you need to put prices on everything, but He's never sold before, so he's never had to dissect it as deeply as I have. Um, I did decide to put prices on almost everything except for maybe maybe like three or four really high-end cards. So I still have a bunch of high-end stuff with prices on it, and you'll see that. Um, all right. All right, so here are some examples of cards that um, for one reason or another, I will not be putting out on display. Even if I was able to sell enough cards where I'd have room for them on my one table, um, I just don't think it's the right time to sell these players or cards. So this one I recently picked up, Lindor. He's been out with, um, I think, an injury to his Achilles or ankle, and um, he hasn't really been able to do much on the field. And I still think... Um, People kind of underrate him as a shortstop, even if he was healthy. Just don't think it's the best time to get rid of this guy. And eBay comps will tell you that. Walker Bueller, uh, his velocity is down this year. So and this is why it's probably not the best idea to invest in a lot of pitchers. I think of my total investment in sports cards, pitchers probably represent 5% or even less than 5%. So um, definitely don't spend a whole lot on pitchers. I did get excited about this Walker Bueller guy, kind of emotions kicked in and I still am very bullish on him long-term, but he was used a bunch last year in the postseason, and um, the, um, the wear might be showing its effects this season. So this guy uh, comps show that I would be taking a loss on this card if I was to sell it near comps. So probably won't be parting with that. Manny Machado moved to a smaller market team. A lot of people expected him to possibly go to the Yankees or maybe get re-signed by the Dodgers. So, um, I, and I still think he's a little underrated based on how much of a contributor he is across the board offensively and defensively. So probably won't be putting that on display. Uh, Joey Votto now at age 35 or 35. 36, I believe, is having a really slow start to the season, which is unfortunate because he also had an off 2018. So hopefully this isn't who Joey Votto is now. Hopefully he's able to regain some of the pre-2018 performance. Um, but I won't be putting that one on display. And then talking about pitchers and bad investments, Lucas Giolito, uh, probably one of the worst or worst pairs of purchases between these two cards that I ever made. Um, no, I, I didn't buy them when he was at his high point. I kind of invested uh, in him at his um, post-peak 2018 time frame where he put together a string of a few solid starts in a row. But uh, he's um, currently injured right now, and hopefully he puts it together. If not this year, then maybe next. Um, Eloy is off to a pretty slow start, um, striking out much more than people I had expected. Uh, power... I think he has like two or three home runs, but he has a whole lot of singles and his batting average isn't really there. So 
probably won't be bringing out the Eloy, um, Taylor Trammell, a top 20 prospect. I just think there's more room for him to grow. Uh, I picked up this card not too long ago, and um, he hasn't really been in the headlines recently, so this one I'll be trying to sell at a later date. And then here's Lindor again. Um, this is probably one of his Holy Grail cards, uh, short print Topps Chrome Rookie. Um, but uh, I don't think it's the right time to sell this one. And here is where I keep all of the single cards that aren't in slabs. Um, as you can see, it's just a three row box, so I don't have a whole lot here. But um, first row is three for a buck. These are like cards that are, you know, barely worth selling. I'm just hoping that people see a player or team that they like, you know, Felix Hernandez. Clearly not sought after cards. 90 Upper Deck Commons, non rookie cards. Um, here's a move on rookie, but it's from the Junk Wax era. Tim Wakefield Gold. So um, Brian Taylor, Bowman Foyle. It's an example of some of the stuff I have in there. And some of the stuff is uh, newer as well, like. 2017 Heritage Minor, Brent Honeywell. Um, and then these ones I've priced as marked. So some of the stuff is uh, stuff I collected as a kid. Uh, most of it is probably more recent than that. Uh, um, autographs that I picked up in 2014 that I haven't been able to sell. Players that died. Um, Jose Fernandez is in here a lot. You're Dono Ventura. Uh, I got some Jeter cards in here too. Pulled that one recently. This Mauvon is actually autographed. And I went through all of this stuff, Bill Clinton. I went through all of this stuff um, a couple of days ago and tried to pull out certain players that I thought might have been susceptible to a value adjustment or change. So Derek Jeter was one of those, Clint Frazier. Um, trying to think who else. But I got a bunch of Juan Sotos in here. Six bucks for Topps Heritage. And I'll give people discounts again if they buy in bulk. So. Got to get rid of this stuff somehow, right? But the idea is for this, um, this box to be separated on the table at a couple feet away from my display cases so that way when people are going through these and they kind of have their elbows out they're not blocking the view of my my bread and butter my expensive single cards that are going to be in the display cases so now for the more high-end cards that will be in the display cases i have two glass display cases they come in a standard size i bought them used on ebay for i think 125 a piece shipped which is actually pretty good and it came with kind of a basic liner it's like just a piece of green felt that makes it just look a little bit nicer underneath it um so for each one of these cards i researched them on ebay i looked at um in some cases current listings but in all cases previously sold items to get a gauge of the market value um over the last month, over the last three months, up to 90 days and if in some cases there weren't any comps i tried to Look at comparable cards. So if there wasn't, if I have the card in Beckett and there was, there were no Beckett comps, I'd look at PSA or SGC, or in some cases there wouldn't be either. And I would just look at like a similar refractor parallel, like, you know, instead of gold, maybe I'd look at blue or et cetera. So, um, and um, these are cards that, again, will be in the display cases. So all cards that I'm not, too emotionally attached to where I'm afraid that somebody will buy them. Um, in my experience, at least as a dealer, you can't be emotionally attached to anything or else you're going to end up with a ton of inventory that um, there's a good chance that it's depreciated over time as well and you're kind of stuck with it. All right. Not going to name off all these cards, but submitted these to PSA at one point actually with a minimum grade of six and a half and they did not make the cut. Thought about sending them back. Uh, maybe I will at some point. So this card actually, um, I might actually price it a little bit higher because I don't think it's the best time to sell it. But if somebody's willing to give me like 800 or so for it, then I might do it. Um, you know, 
looking for that impulse buyer. And that's part of the reason why I would be accepting uh, credit cards as well. I don't want to, to, to rule out the possibility of, you know, making a sale. So even if I do lose, you know, a certain amount with PayPal fees and because there is a, a paper trail, I'm technically um, required to pay or collect sales tax from it. So that could be like at least 10%. I'll, you know, I'll try to adjust my prices accordingly for those that are willing to pay in cash versus those that don't. Um, so Joey Votto, um, I don't think he's hot right now, like I said before, but... I think the gold rookies are pretty popular, actually. And I might bring one Eloy just in case somebody really wants one. Um, the other one that I was withholding was a base. This is his refractor. And there's just not as many comps out there. So I might be able to actually get a little bit more for that. And here's another Jeter that I'll I'll be more likely to, to sell the, the BGS versus the PSA. Um, the, the recent comps on the PSA 10s and the... Just the appreciation over the last two months is more significant with a PSA 10. Uh, this card, geez, it's been going for a lot. So it's one that I had literally priced about half, uh, maybe about 35 bucks, almost double that with this 52 number, just because the the PSA 9s are going for, I think, close to 100, if not more than 100. This is probably a PSA 8, but somebody wants to take the gamble. And hey, some people don't collect slot cards. Um, so I have a, in this box, I have a mix of vintage and modern, probably mostly, definitely mostly modern. And I think the shoe box that I show next actually has the most high-end stuff in it. So Mickey Mantle, uh, his cards, and he's, I know everybody knows that he's a hot player to collect, but over the last few months, it's really, I think, gone to a different level. I was a little surprised. Um, this card, for instance, in a PSA 5, the VCP was about 230 bucks last year, and I know I don't have access to VCP, but I know Mike Baseball Collector actually bought one of these at the National. I have a good memory for things like this. I think he paid like 230 or 235 and got like a little card thrown in. I think it was like a Rivera uh, TTM autograph or something thrown into the mix. But um, yeah, I mean, I paid 235 for it, and I was surprised that comps were way over 300. So, but I have no problem with that. Uh, Clemente's cards are actually going up too. Don Newcomb purchased one right after he died, and um, there was a comp that went for, I think, like 130, and the coloring wasn't nearly as nice. Ryan McMahon is a hot player right now, um, or at least should be. I know when I watch or listen to my fantasy baseball podcasts, he's um, he's a guy that they talk about picking up and dropping players for. Uh, Frank Robinson rookie cards, um, these have gone up since he died. I mean, I purchased them after he died, but they've still gone up at, even since based on comps. It's one I picked up recently, hoping for a quick flip. Another Jeter card. Might not be the right time to sell some of these pools cards. I'm definitely still a buyer. So I have this one priced above, um, a little bit above comps for that reason. This is one that probably people haven't seen before. Carlos Correa is off to a pretty good start to the season. This is in really nice condition. I thought about sending this to PSA, but um, or Beckett because it's a Bowman Chrome cards look good in the Beckett slabs and the auto grade. I think is pretty cool. A lot of um, collectors look at that type of thing and value it. But this is number to five hundred. This guy is off to a great start to the season. Had this in a BGS nine and a half quad, um, nine and a half slab, but. Ended up taking it out. That's a longer story for a different video. Um, here's an example of a card that I thought I was going to take a loss on. Um, bought his Chrome Update autograph refractor, not recognizing that it would be less desirable than his regular Chrome Update, even though it says refractor, but it's not numbered. So I don't know what the pop card doesn't say refractor, but... The person that listed it said it was his refractor. So I don't know what the pop count on this is versus a standard Chrome Auto, but this is a sticker auto. So I thought I'd take a loss on it, but they're going for a lot right now. Uh, David Ortiz, I think his cards could actually heat up. Uh, this Ultra product is so hard to find. I'm trying to buy it for a future rookie card explosion, but they're, they don't they don't come up at all. Um, Arenado, I actually might. Uh, Beckett and PSA will be on site. I might send this off to Beckett, not for the Rock Card review, but... Um, I think it, I think it has a great chance of getting a BGS nine. Um, and if I'm able to get that, then I can definitely sell this for, for more than 900. 
this is probably um, a PSA four, four and a half, and it's price as such. If I was to get it submitted, I don't think it's gonna be a five, but you never know. Somebody might think so. This card is priced ridiculously, because, like ridiculously high, just because um, I think it'll eventually get there. And um, there's just so few on eBay. There might be one or two that are in raw condition. You never see PSA 10s. I'm guessing the total pops under 15. Um, I got a really good deal on this one. I think it's a good time to buy Otani. I mean, he's injured right now. He's not pitching till next year. So I'd say buy the three angels, Trout, Pools, and Otani right now. Decent strategy. Um, this card I did really well on. They're selling for a ton. So excited to see what type of uh, profit I'll make off that one. This one's a sticker auto, but I think there's definitely a market for it. It's a Cunha, of course. It's only the pro debut card, but it is numbered to 10. And um, it's important to stay focused in the hobby. Um, when I first got back into it last year, I was buying just Alex Bregman's. And if you looked at my margins um, of just buying and selling him versus him combined with everybody else that I purchased subsequent to that, you'd notice a decline. So... Uh, Bregman was super undervalued last year. His first Bowman Major League card autographed in uh, PSA 10 was going for under 200. Now you see guys like Peter Alonzo, um, their first Bowman standard autograph card from 2016 um, is in a PSA 10 is going for north of 400. But like Alex Bregman's a top five player in the game and Pete Alonzo's not yet, uh, at least in my opinion with, uh, with Bregman. Great all-around player, still very young. I think he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Pete Alonzo, you can't make those claims about yet. Looks like um, the Fist cards have gone up. So this is, I think I actually doubled my price on this since I had a price last a few months ago. Eight and a half, not a, not a PSA, but still. Here's another Mantle card that's um, the beneficiary of some appreciation. And then shoebox number two. Oh, one last card. This is actually my only ever purchase from the Shriners when I went for the first time a few years ago. Um, it was back before I realized anything, I, before I knew anything about vintage cards and that you shouldn't buy Beckett graded vintage. I was so used to buying the Beckett Bowman Chrome cards for the modern stuff and I was like, oh yeah, it's pretty reputable, right? <laughs> and I learned. So here's the real high-end high end stuff. So Trevor Bauer, orange. Sold a red that I talked about on a previous video for uh, 1200 um, on eBay. And this is his orange. Should sell for roughly a third as much. Um, subgrades aren't as good. But it's definitely more affordable for a lot of people. So um, probably looking at close to doubling my money on that one. Bueller, um, I withdrew one of his other cards. But uh, these... Topps Heritage um, red ink autographs are pretty hot right now. They've gone up a lot for the star players like Acuna and Soto. And I think, um, I don't know, there's there's less of a chance right now that I could take a hit on this one versus the Bowman Chrome based on what I've seen. Um, comparable listings with just similar players and stuff. Xander Bogart's really nice subs there. Um, Altuve's off to a really great start. Looks like that knee's healthy as power's back. This card has gone up recently, actually. Um, don't have it in a PSA 10, unfortunately. But uh, Juan Soto is a guy who's cold right now, so I'm withholding some of his cards, to be honest, and I might withhold more. But the Bowman Chrome autograph in a green is just very rare. Uh, there was one that sold less than a month ago for about the same with, I'd say, inferior subs. So I'm looking to uh, to definitely make some money on this one if I can. If not, it'll look really sweet in my showcase. So I'll probably just keep that one out. Might be my one Juan Soto in the case. Uh, Ronald Acuna, really nice subs on this one. I'm going to almost double my money on this, I hope. Just purchased that um, probably in like November. Uh, Mickey Mantle, really nice. 54 Bowman. The VCP is all over the place for this one, but uh, really nice centering. So I have it on the higher side. Um, this one's the opposite. I have it on the lower side of the VCP probably just because of the, um, for a PSA nine, it's just left, right centering is annoying. It's not, it's not the best. <laughs> um, 
This is a car that I think will continue to go up. Altuve's Tops Update rookie. It's in another factor that could cause this to go up is just it's so hard for people to get their hands on this product. This is the one that has trout in it that costs like twenty six hundred for a hobby box now. Um, it's one I picked up from Kentucky baseball collector Phil Craig. My only trout that will be on display, which is just sad. I should have more. Um, another Bregman. More Bregmans. More Bregmans. More Bregmans. Victor Robles is off to a pretty good start. Uh, I don't think people realize it. Hasn't been too explosive, but or too noticeable, but um, decent amount of um, walks, home runs, and steals so far, I believe, and uh, decent batting average. So it's a really pretty card. Hoping to make a few hundred on that. Yeah, this is um, the Taylor Trammell I might withhold. I think I decided to withhold one of them. I have two. This is a card that's gone up recently, Acuna's um, action variation. Really sweet card. Tough to get that in a 10, actually. So this is another Juan Soto. I forgot it had, I had it in here, but um, might hold out this one. I think I have it in there just because I got it for such a great price that even if I am to sell it at, um, say, like a 30-day low, then I'll still make a good return off that. This one is a result from a previous PSA submission through Mike O. Uh, PSA 9s are going for about 120 on eBay. Jim Palmer, rookie. PSA 8. Nick Senzel is healthy now, so hopefully he gets called up next week. Um, probably the next big player to come up after Vlad, in my opinion. Got two of these in a PSA 10. I think I have one price slightly higher because it's got... Um, it's also a... or Sorry, BGS 10. I have one price slightly higher because it's got the 10 subgrade with centering. Here's another Eloy. I probably need to take out that one. <clears throat> Here's the other Senzel. Senzel. Bowman 1951 says it's pronounced Senzel. You got a LeBron rookie. Really nice subs. Look at that. And the eight and a half sub is surface. So looks like a car that you might consider actually cracking at submitting the PSA, hoping for a 10. Another Robinson rookie. Look at this Willie Mays card. This one I've never shown on a video. Really sweet. Getting a ton of interest on this on eBay. Ton of offers at 650, but I want 650 cash. So bought this from a Facebook group. What I notice about Facebook groups, sometimes the best deals are within the first like 30 minutes. So you gotta kind of like put on your notifications in order to take advantage of it, or else it'll be sold right away. Sort of like real estate, you know. If the house has been on the market for more than thirty days, there's probably something wrong with it. <clears throat> nice rose second year cup. Uh, this card I purchased from Alico Three. Um, no recent comps, so trying to take advantage of that and make fifty percent return. Another Ryan McMahon. Another card that I should have taken a loss on with the Acuna non-Bowman Chrome autographs I have. Um, but I think I'll be able to get my money back on this one. He's so hot right now. Wander Franco. It'll be interesting to see what prices are with him. They change every day wildly and not always in the up direction, unfortunately. And this is his uh, refractor number 499. Charizard, don't ask. This just channels for baseball cards, but very expensive card. I'm going to have this out there, the 55 Tops Clemente PSA 4. Just picked it up for $1,325, hoping to sell it for around $1,600. I think it's at least in the middle of a pack for a PSA 4. It's got that, the first thing that I look at is the uh, the deep colors, the green, the contrast, um, of course the centering, and then all, the, all of the other stuff that you want to look at. <laughs> so uh, this card's gone up like all the other PSA 10 Jeters, even the ones that were mass produced. This card's gone up recently. Pujols and Ishro. Picked it up for my buddy Ramsey. Look at that. Really nice subs, too. There's a PSA 9, at least. I think. And this card has gone up a lot. The Acuna short print out of Series 2. Albies. Soft to a good season. Start of the season. All right, now I got some wax products that I plan on selling. 
89 Donruss. I'm gonna give out packs to the kids, usually one or two packs per kid. Um, given the amount of young children that collect baseball cards these days, I probably won't go through more than two or three boxes of this all weekend. Kind of sad, but true. Got some blaster boxes that I picked up pretty cheap. Picked up cases of these, included those in the rookie card explosion box, but there's probably gonna be some some more that um, I can sell at a um, premium. So, got uh, this that I picked up recently, Facebook 92 Bowman Jumbo. Uh, I'd be happy to sell this for 20 or $30 profit. And then we have the prize that Joe Schmo turned down. Jay Schmo, Joe Smaltz. Um, he won my free flight giveaway contest and he decided to defer or actually switch and give the grand prize to Pepino Man. Pepino Man had won a runner up prize of Rookie, Artist, Rookie Card Explosion Box, so they switched because Jay Schmo wasn't going to the national and he felt bad taking the grand prize and um, taking away the opportunity for somebody else to go to the national because he didn't plan on going this year because he just got a new job. So this box I purchased for about 120 back in December. Uh, 10 packs, 50 pack, 50 cards per pack. And with the Christian Yelich um, offensive debauchery that's going on right now, the last one actually sold on eBay for 400. So I'd be happy to get um, 325 plus for this, I think. Given, given that, I paid roughly a third of that for this box. So, Jay Shimo, little did you know, but you'd be passing up on a prize that was more valuable than the flight that I purchased for Pepino Man. Direct flight, too. Uh, all right, next up, 2013 Topps Chrome. This product has gone up quite a bit since the offseason. Um, don't know exactly who's in it. I don't, I do know the cards are beautiful. Of course, Machado's in here. Uh, Jose Fernandez. Um, I don't know if Yelich is or not, but I would like to open this, but, um, I already opened up some product last week and got burnt on that. So, you know, I gotta be disciplined with how much wax I open. Got this 2008 Topps Chrome. Um, might try to include this in a rookie card explosion box. It's been just been tough for me to get this. Uh, I kind of want to. I have like price points in my head for each box of wax that I purchase, and um, right now it's just a little too high. So I might just sell this so I can, because I need another two boxes of this to include it in a rookie card explosion box. We got this here, 2011 Topps Heritage Minor League loaded. It's got Harper and Trout in it. I uh, got a good price on it, I think. So, um, trying to see if I can find any takers for this. So, Topps Update Hobby Box is about a month ago. We're selling for 65 and now they're selling for about 100 I guess. So, still have a case of this to include in Rookie Card Explosions, but might try to sell a box or two um, while the price is high. I don't know how sustainable that price is because they probably printed about 300,000 cards just for that product. This one I picked up at a show in Cranston, hoping for a flip. This is the 2011 Bowman. It's got, I believe, the Bryce Harper rookie card inside of it. It's a jumbo box with three autographs, six Bowman chrome cards in every pack. Um, 450. Is probably the 450 to 475 is probably the going rate on it now. Probably will continue to go up too. I got this. This I picked up from blowout.com back in like um, November of last year. Um, this has got a subset of those the greats from the 2015 checklist. So some of them are in Bowman Baseball, some are in Bowman Draft, and some are in Bowman Chrome. Um, so 280, I think I thought was a good price for this, uh, five autos. So th these are, uh, yeah, 10 packs, 60 cards per pack. They're huge packs. I saw, um, Lico three break a super jumbo box back in the day. 
And then this is 2018 Heritage, not the high number. The high number I like better for the explosions, got more rookie cards. This, the checklist isn't quite as good. I think it has Otani, but probably not Soto or Acuna. So I'm trying to sell this while I can. And I also have a two row box with slabs in it. So this is for some of the low to mid end items that don't fit into the display case. Um, try to keep the prices like $50 and under, I think. There's probably a few that are slightly above 50. Uh, I won't go through each one of these in detail, but I did research each one. Um, by the way, it looks like the living set cards have really gone down in price because Robles is a hot player, but his cards went down like 30 or 40% I saw based on last time. Um, so kind of sucks for those that bought into the living set. And I did pay attention to the, the print run. Uh, Robles and Bueller, I believe, are well under 7,500, which is a lot less than what Soto, Acuna, and Otani had printed. So, um, And it turns out a lot of people say these are condition, condition sensitive, but if you really look at the PSA distribution on... Um, PSA SMR's website, you'll notice that more than 50% of probably every card is a 10. Uh, in some cases, it's closer to 75 or 80%. Terry Francona. Manny be Manny. Some of these aren't slabs. Screw downs, but you, know, you get the point. They fit nicely in the same box, so... And again, all prices are negotiable. So some of these I might want to take a price on, but most I do not. Willing to go down. Got this from Silver Jack if I want this contest. So sorry, man, but I'm trying to sell this. Storage costs are high here in Filmington. Can't hold on to stuff for too long. This one went up. The Jeter card, not by much. Just a SVC 9. A bunch of these Sotos, oh, they really stick together. I try to save the um, PSA perfect fit sleeves for more expensive cards that go in the display case. Yeah, I like using these, um, whatever you call them. I think they're from Ultra Pro. Really loose. They're even loose on the Beckett. They weren't really made for PSA. They're just way too baggy. But I like the fact that you can, you know, take one off and replace it and put a new sticker on it with a new price. Um, you know, they get banged up easily and people pick them up. I'm always transporting them myself and just like the uh, the ability to kind of dispose of them and use a new one without hurting the, the budget too much. But perfect fit sleeves are a really great product, and I bet they could withstand a lot more abuse than these um, crappy sleeves. All right, already showed those things. Hey guys, so thank you for anyone who stuck around for the entire video. I don't know why you did. If you did, you should probably look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, you know, what what is wrong with you? You know, there was some sort of opportunity cost. You could have went to the gym. You could have called your grandmother, but you stuck around for this retarded 38-minute video. Um, I cut out some clips. Uh, one of them was me showing how I priced all the cards that I broke out of my recent 2019 Bowman product, which is something that's very important to do. Elite Co. 3 does it very well. Um, you break a lot of products. You definitely want to monetize the base cards, the paper cards, uh, in the case of Bowman, as much as you can. And um, it turns out with a product like 2019 Bowman, the common cards are going to be the most hot and sought after right after the release. So perfect time for me to get rid of those. So uh, thanks a lot for tuning in and I plan on posting some additional footage either Friday or Saturday, I hope. I know Bowman 1951 will do a great job at that. His, uh, his video skills are top notch and he's going to have a lot less to do in that time frame where I'll be the, the big seller. So he's going to be there uh, assisting me on Saturday. But take care guys. Hopefully you liked you saw.